and I want to start by th thanking the organizing uh, committee for uh, uh, inviting me to this meeting. It's a privilege. So um, I'd like to talk about some efforts we've been through uh, in Norway in order to improve the access to clinical trials in Norway. As you know, uh, precision cancer medicine has been through a huge development the past years uh, with many drugs and new biomarkers uh, uh, being developed and evolved. And also, as has been talked about yesterday, uh, many new drugs uh, with a huge cost are being developed. So this is, of course, a challenge. Let me see. Yeah. So in Norway, uh, we started uh, uh, work in precision cancer medicine. Um, we saw that there was quite a lot of differences uh, in our country regarding the uh, diagnostics. Some hospitals had small panels testing for biomarkers, others had larger. So we all saw that there was a need for uh, more advanced diagnostics uh, testing for the biomarkers that uh, matched the drugs that were coming up. There was a bottom-up uh, initiative. In addition, the government really saw the need as well. Uh, there was lots of talk about uh, precision cancer medicine, but uh, no uh, real action before then 2019. Uh, internationally, there was uh, collaboration, and we joined the drug network in Europe, uh, among many other uh, countries. In 2019, there was a meeting in Amsterdam where 10 different countries were represented and uh, uh, discussing uh, similar kinds of studies. Uh, of course, in order to make this happen, we also needed a public-private partnership. We needed a dialogue with the uh, pharmaceutical companies so that we could have access to new drugs, as was alluded to by David Thomas yesterday as well. So we started with the diagnostics. Uh, we needed uh, advanced molecular diagnostics. We uh, decided to go for the TSO 500 as a start. Uh, and this was supposed to be uh, offered all patients with advanced cancer in Norway. Uh, uh, right now, it was to screen for clinical studies. Uh, and um, therefore, it was offered after standard treatment. In addition, we established a national molecular tumor board uh, in the middle in the picture there. Uh, this uh, was important uh, in order to educate the clinicians all over Norway. Uh, uh, clinicians could refer patients uh, to diagnostics and discuss the findings at the national molecular board with expertise in different fields represented. So uh, depending on the findings, of course, patients were referred to other ongoing clinical trials, uh, which was preferred. Uh, uh, they were referred to uh, treatment in a national clinical study in Impress Norway, which I will talk about uh, in a few moments, uh, or they were referred back to standard treatment or care. And this diagnostic pipeline is publicly reimbursed so that it uh, actually offered all uh, patients with advanced disease. Uh, in addition, for the patients included in the clinical study, Impress Norway, uh, we also collected biological material with blood samples for ctDNA, uh, biopsies for uh, investigations of resistance mechanisms, for instance, and quality of life uh, assessments uh, throughout the, the study. So in Impress Norway, the clinical study, all hospitals with a cancer department uh, are participating, uh, which means that the patients actually can have their study inclusion and treatment uh, at the hospital where they belong. This means that the public healthcare system really uh, offered quite a lot of money. Uh, so 60 million Norwegian kroners uh, equals approximately 6 million euros. Uh, was given by the public healthcare system. Uh, we had the, uh, both drugs and uh, some funding for the hospitals treating the patients from different pharmaceutical companies, and we have received uh, uh, ctDNA uh, support from uh, both uh, Foundation One or Roche and Illumina. So this impressed Norway 
It stands for improving public health care uh, by implementing precision cancer medicine in Norway. It's for uh, all patients with advanced disease, including hematological diseases. Uh, we have close collaboration with the DRIP network. Uh, there are similar studies in the other Nordic countries so that we can share data and um, um, uh, collaborate in investigating the small cohorts, small subsets of patients uh, in precision cancer medicine. Uh, in Norway, all patients then are diagnosed with a 500 gene panel. Uh, they are discussed at the National Molecular Tumor Board, uh, where uh, we all learn from each other and uh, uh, increase the competence in this field. Uh, we use approved drugs so that we don't expect any huge um, surprises regarding toxicity. Um, and uh, we collaborate closely with the Cancer Registry of Norway so that uh, we have long-term follow-up of the data uh, of all the patients. Um, yeah. So it's the same setup in uh, several of the studies ongoing in the DRIP network. Um, the DRIP trial in the Netherlands started, and uh, the Nordic studies have the same setup. We we they shared the protocol, they shared the ECRF, so it's very easy later on to collaborate and data uh, analyze. We start with eight patients uh, receiving one drug um, based on a biomarker and one diagnostic subgroup. If one among these eight patients have clinical benefit at 16 weeks of treatment, we continue with 16 more patients with the same biomarker, same drug, and uh, mm, same uh, diagnostic subgroup. So if five or more of the 24 in total patients have clinical benefit at 16 weeks, we try to develop uh, an expansion cohort. Uh, and the expansion cohorts are then to gather more evidence for that combination of biomarker, drug, and diagnostic subgroup. It might be pan cancer, or it might be a rarer biomarker in one diagnostic uh, histology group. Um, at that time, when we have 24 patients analyzed, we have known response data, we have a known price on the drug, it's known duration of response, no frequency of target population, so it's quite a lot of factors that's actually quite well uh, uh, analyzed. The pharma company then provides drug for treatment in 16 weeks, and if the patient uh, benefits at 16 weeks, the public healthcare system provides the drug then thereafter. So this is the first time in Norway where the public healthcare system actually provides drug in a investigator-initiated clinical trial, and we're very happy about that. And right now, it's uh, the DRIP trial and the Impress Norway who has this expansion cohort uh, going in with Olaparib. Uh, in the study, Impress Norway will also have uh, extensive collection of data and the biological material. Uh, we see this uh, as a real national uh, study and an effort so that we uh, have this material available for all the uh, research groups in Norway. They can uh, get both the data and the biological material so that they can pursue their uh, favorite research uh, question. So we have, uh, for the patients included in the screening, we have the TSO500 data, the liquid uh, uh, ctDNA analysis and the uh, quality of life analysis. And then we have uh, the same at the week 16, we have also the quality of life for all those patients. And this is, of course, enabling us to do health economy analysis. For the patients included in treatment in Impress Norway, we have a new fresh biopsy before they start treatment at week 16 and uh, upon progression. Uh, and we collect also blood samples at regular time points and uh, uh, quality of life data. So when we started two years ago in April uh, 2021, we had eight drugs available provided then by Roche. We now have uh, spent quite a lot of time meeting with the different pharma companies and we have 21 drugs available for, uh, for the study in Press Norway, uh, where the drug then is given free uh, from the pharma company uh, in addition to a small uh, amount of money to the hospital treating the patient. 
Uh, so we have, uh, since April 21, included 791 patients into the molecular profiling phase. Uh, 662 of these patients have been through the discussions in the molecular tumor board. Uh, out of these 662 patients, 23% have been uh, offered treatment in uh, a cohort in Impress Norway. 1% uh, only has been included in other clinical trials, and this is what we are the most unhappy with. We want more clinical studies available for our patients, uh, so we all, always prioritize the other clinical studies, the pharma-led studies or other studies, as uh, we don't want to compete. We, will, we don't want to impress Norway to compete with other studies. We want as many studies as possible uh, for our patients. In addition, 10% of the patients have been uh, referred to early access programs and uh, then giving uh, the possibilities to new treatment by those kind of programs. And the rest is then referred back to palliative or standard treatment and care. So on the right-hand side of this slide, you see that uh, uh, 107 uh, of these patients have started treatment. And there's a lag there, of course, because they are in uh, included in this study while they are still on their standard treatment. Uh, so we have very many different cohorts, uh, many number of cancer diagnoses, and a number of different drugs. So it's quite heterogeneous data material. Uh, 84 patients have been evaluated at 16 weeks across all cohorts, and approximately half of them have clinical benefit at 16 weeks. So this is just to show a swimmer's plot uh, of the patients uh, included. Uh, the top one is a glioblastoma patient who had complete response at first evaluation time point uh, on BRAF and MEK inhibitors. Uh, with a BRAF mutation, uh, and of course that's inspiring. Uh, we have many stable diseases and some uh, uh, partial responses. And as part of this uh, effort with uh, the diagnostics and the clinical study, we have established CONNECT, which is a public-public-private partnership with the pharma and the diagnostic industry. Uh, the public health care system representatives, and the hospitals. And this is a forum for discussions and uh, uh, to identify bottlenecks and see what can be done with them. In addition, we have received 13 million uh, euros approximately from the Research Council in Norway and the Cancer Society to, to push the diagnostics and the study treatments further. Uh, so this is a research center <clears throat> where we uh, have new kinds of diagnostics, we have new kind of uh, clinical studies, investigator initiated studies in collaboration with the pharma industry. Uh, we have a work package looking into patient-centered care and health care organization and implementation. And in the middle, we have a work package dedicated to helping other hospitals and uh, the hospital in Oslo to engage in clinical studies. We believe that that uh, enables um, more hospitals to be part of clinical studies and that uh, that would benefit more patients. So it's uh, national participation in this uh, uh, research uh, center as well. We invited all hospitals with cancer department uh, to participate in the uh, project uh, and almost all of them uh, are now part of the center. Uh, one last uh, effort in Norway to to help uh, engage in clinical studies in Norway is the NOR trials uh, efforts. Uh, it was launched as part of a strategic uh, plan promoted by the Norwegian Ministry of Health to strengthen Norway as a country of excellence for performing clinical trials. It's also a public-private partnership between the healthcare system and the industry. Uh, there's a coordinating unit, and there's six different North Trials centers. And the one for cancer is uh, administered from uh, Oslo University Hospital, where I work. Uh, and the plan is to enable more hospitals uh, elsewhere in Norway to actually uh, participate in clinical studies. And there are some small funds, funds coming with this uh, as well. 
Uh, yes, so I think I'll just skip that and end with this slide, just to show that this really has been a national effort uh, engaging broadly, uh, and this uh, correspondence in Nature Medicine uh, with Ketil Taskian as the first author had 127 authors, showing that this really is national effort from the pharma, there's authors from the pharma industry, from the public uh, healthcare system and from the hospitals. Thank you.